Professor Kriyonsa Charyon Wongsa, Chairman of Nation Building Institute International. His Excellency Dato Dr. J.C. Tang, Chairman of Nation Building Institute Malaysia. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I'm delighted once again to attend the fifth international conference on nation building 2021 under the theme economic policies for crisis recovery and nation building. Taking this opportunity, I highly appreciate the Nation Building Institute of Thailand for making the efforts to collaborate with key partners in the region to organize this forum via video conference on such an important theme. In fact, although the global economy is expected to recover in 2021, we are still facing high uncertainties due to the risk of new waves of new coronavirus variants that are more virulent and continue to disrupt general socioeconomic activities. Apparently, within the regional framework, the new variants have made some countries which used to have a good control, become hotspots of the spreads of COVID-19. With the continued threats of COVID-19, regional geopolitical tensions and trade and tech war among the superpowers have been affecting, complicating, and further raising the levels of uncertainty in the developments of the regions and the world. In addition, concern over peace, stability, and security are growing in our Asian region as a result of the trends toward multipolarity and the shift in the balance of global power, coupled with the trends of using various forms of repressive forces and the increased impacts of climate change and natural disasters that are becoming more apparent. This is also undermining international order and multilateralism. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, despite facing higher uncertainties, I am of the view that our regions will continue playing an essential role in driving economic recovery after the COVID-19 crisis with sustainable and inclusive socioeconomic development. In fact, the crisis reflects two crucial realities that are worth paying high attention to. One, despite the challenges, some countries in Asia continue to achieve positive growth and are currently leading the recovery process. And two, the COVID-19 crisis has been providing a rare opportunity to promote deep reforms and strengthen capacities of public institutions. Concurrently, going forward, COVID-19 is foreseen to become a part of a new normals. In this regard, to promote a resilient and inclusive socioeconomic recovery, I would like to share my views on the prioritized tasks that we all need to devote greater attention to. First, a touching high priority and utmost necessity in ensuring that vaccines recognized by the World Health Organization and the COVID-19 treatments medicines are global public goods, which will be supplied and distributed to each country without any political agenda. Second, formulating and launching policies and measures to facilitate 
the transition to the context of this new normal, both economically and socially. Third, continuing to strengthen globalization as well as ensuring that our cooperation mechanism continues to maintain an open spirit and support the multilateral trading system. Fourth, promoting the development of key relevant sectors, including one, digitalization with priority given to the building of digital government and the development of supporting infrastructure to maximize the benefits of digital technology. Two, development of social resiliencies with focus on the development of public health and social protection system. Three, development of human resources. And four, investment in infrastructure, energy, and green technologies to adapt to climate change. And fifth, promoting the participation of all key stakeholders, in particular the private sectors and development partners, to mobilize additional resources, both financially and non-financially. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, under the wise and prudent leadership of Sumdak Akyat Mahasanapadei De Chohun Sen, Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Cambodia, the Royal Government of Cambodia has regarded vaccinations as a key strategic measure to control COVID-19 so as to reduce cases in infections, severe illnesses and death, in particular, aiming at achieving herd immunity, which is a driving force toward the new normals of socioeconomic activities. At the same time, the Royal Government of Cambodia on the 1st August 2021 decided to launch vaccination campaigns for children and youth aged 12 to under 18 and booster shots for frontline public service officers. Moreover, the Royal Government of Cambodia has been actively implementing three other measures, namely one, continuing to contain and detect infections in a timely manner through a wider use of rapid test kits. Two, strengthening treatment capability medication usage, as well as effective treatment methods. And three, continuing to promote rigorous implementations of necessary administrative, health, and legal measures to attract broad and active public participations from people from all walks of life. As a result of the above mentioned efforts, Cambodia has become one of the countries in the regions and the world that have achieved a remarkably high level of vaccinations. As of 8 September 2021, the rate of the people at the age of 12 and above getting full doses of the COVID-19 vaccines is at 76% of the targeted population, 12 million. I would like to inform the conference that the infections, severe illnesses, and death have been declining steadily over the past month. On this basis, Cambodia is expected to achieve herd immunity throughout the country and to gradually reopen full socioeconomic activities in the near future. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, on the socioeconomic aspects, the Royal Government of Cambodia has already introduced nine rounds of highly effective interventions 
measures aiming at stabilizing businesses and livelihood of the people, especially workers, employees, poor families, and those vulnerable to the effects of the COVID-19 crisis. With the commitment to turn the COVID-19 crisis into an opportunity for deeper reforms, aiming at building a stronger and more resilient socioeconomic system to future crisis. The royal government of Cambodia is preparing to launch the post-COVID-19 economic recovery plan 2021-2023. With the goals of reviving economic growth back to its sustainable, resilient, and inclusive potential growth. I would like to inform the conference that this economic recovery plan will employ a so-called 3R approach, including one, recovery, with focus on reviving key sectors that are the pillars of the economy before the COVID-19 crisis, as well as leveraging the potentials that Cambodia is endowed with to the maximum. Two, reforms, with focus on continuing key structural reforms, including improving investment climates and trade facilitations, improving the effectiveness of logistic systems, developing clean or green energy, developing key hard infrastructures, and promoting and developing digitalization in the economic system. And three, resiliency, with focus on strengthening the preparedness and responsiveness to similar crises or situations that may occur in the future in both economic and social aspects by developing a strong, effective, and inclusive public health and social protection system, improving the education and human resource development system, developing and strengthening SMEs, developing green economy, and reducing the impact of climate change. In order to achieve the aforementioned goals, launching an appropriate public finance policy that ensures allocative and operational efficiency is the key strategy. In this regard, the Royal Government of Cambodia will continue implementing expansionary budget policy, promoting investment in key infrastructures, prioritizing targeted spending appropriations, and strengthening the mobilization of potential resources in both tax and non-tax revenue, as well as introducing various financing mechanisms to meet all spending needs in the context of COVID-19 crisis and ensure the recovery of socioeconomic development in Cambodia. Finally, I wish Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, good health, happiness, prosperity, and success in all you endeavors, especially be safe from COVID-19. Thank you very much.